I V M. Welcome to another episode of IVM Likes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I keep waiting for you. Oh, are you welcoming you. us or are you welcoming the listeners? All of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's up? Lots this of is, us. Yeah, yeah. We have five of us. This is episode one hundred and one, and in the studio with me, there's Chanu. Hi, Alika. Oh, hello, Abbas. Hi, and Amit. Hello. What's up, guys? Are you excited? This is yes. episode yeah. one hundred and one. As I mentioned, first episode. Yeah. Yes. Very mm. excited. A quick, uh, since it's episode one hundred and one, quickly. This is what we do on IVM Legs. The first round is where we recommend stuff, stuff we've been watching or listening to, or just generally pop culture stuff. And the second round, we discuss a topic. So for today, the topic is TV shows that aren't worth finishing. That's you the should uh, clarify that a little bit more, right? Okay. Uh, do you mean that the TV shows just are uh, they get tired, or that the end suck, or what do you mean by that? Um, generally, just, yeah, you think you feel like they aren't worth your time anymore. Like there's so much stuff that started off well, but then yeah, people, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Or okay, all right, that's yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, cool. First round recommendation. Who wants to go first? John. Oh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I am recommending a TV show called Sick Note. So I just stumbled upon this on Netflix. And is it a Netflix original? It is. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, it. Features uh, Rupert Grint as the protagonist, and it has uh, Nick Frost. Both are amazing in the. the, the uh, it's a comedy, black comedy, and uh, yeah, like. <laughs> this, what's the uh, wait, what's so the premise of the uh, like? Actually, there's this kind of. If you read the description of the show, there's a spoiler in there. So this is not really uh, a spoiler. Okay. This uh, Rupert Grint <laughs> is this employee at this workplace, and he gets misdiagnosed with cancer. Okay. Oh. And it's it's super funny, like how he. Uh, so th- this this uh, guy, his uh, doctor is Nick Frost, who plays mm. the character of uh, Doctor Ian Glennis. Mm. And he's a super goofy doctor who doesn't know anything, and like is really like messing up the diagnosis clearly, yeah. and a lot of other things. And yeah, he tells Rupert Grint, you know what? Okay, you have cancer, and this guy's obviously world comes crumbling down. Oh my god! And he's like, what then do they I make do a now? potion. Is there magic involved? No, but there is there is a great there is a great uh, Harry Potter reference. Oh no! Yes. In, in uh, this is uh, Ron's I, post-divorce life. Yeah. <laughs> Got a job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. But uh, yeah, I, I won't give out what the reference is. Check it out. To, uh, it's a series. Get, it's a series. Oh, okay. it's, it has two seasons out till now. I have like finished Damn. the second season. It's it, and the the best part is like I I got hooked onto this show, man. It's so hilarious and like just the whole plot. It's unpredictable. You don't know what's happening. Everything is. People are like lying to each other and hiding things and like wow. murder after so murder. Like, really? like, oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. There's murder. <laughs> also, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Nice. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chana. Moving on to a bus. What are you? All right. I am also uh, recommending a Netflix original. Wow. But it's a film. It's a film called Cam. C A M. So it's a psychological thriller about um, a girl who's a Cam girl. On the internet, oh, uh, I think right? I've seen the trailer for yeah. this one. Yeah, they have these uh, uh, girls who, for some money, uh, hmm. they do cam shows for the clients on the internet. Hmm. And the interesting thing about it is that the writer of the film used to be a real cam girl. Okay. Oh. So she's drawn on her inspirations to write this film. Hmm. What happens in the film is we, in the first about fifteen minutes, we get a glimpse of how they live their life, hmm. how dark the internet can get. So it starts off with uh, like the sexual stuff, hmm. where the comments are asking her to take her clothes. Mm. Off and stuff, and then it gets really dark where they start asking her to use a knife oh, and yeah. do this like oh, really oh, yeah. twisted stuff, and how it's like a part of the life of these cam girls. So the first fifty fifteen minutes mm. is that, and then one fine day she wakes up and she tries to log into her account, mm. but she finds she's already logged in and she's already doing a show live. When she's actually not. Yeah. What? Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. This is all just the trailer. It's funny. <laughs> How does it work? Wait. Exactly. So the rest of the movie <laughs> is her going down this rabbit hole, and finding out exactly. It's it's. Also makes a larger comment about how we are all living our lives online, mm. and how we are all so dependent on artificial Man. intelligence. Right. Yeah. 
but it's done very nicely it's very crisp i think the movie is around 80 minutes long it's very fast paced it mm. keeps you on the edge of your seat mm. and it's very beautifully shot so if you've seen uh, nicholas winding refn who's the guy who made drive and <laughs> only got oh. right, right. like he uses neon lights and colors very well mm. so this film kind of draws inspiration on that and uses that color palette to tell the story oh. it's a, it's a dark film but it's a very interesting film i think you should check it out yeah yeah Also uh, have you guys seen Handmaid's Tale? I have. Cuz the main lead of this movie is uh, played by Madeline who was another character in Handmaid's Tale Handmaid's oh, Tale okay. and she also does a great job doing like dark characters. Yeah. Because in Handmaid's Tale also she's been through a lot and she's always again a great show if you haven't seen it. ियल It is a uh, so I think I have spoken about this before, but I'm a fan of the genre pretty people solving crimes. Yeah, yeah you've said this yes. before. What's so, the acronym for this? P P. I have never pretty people, brought pretty that people up. solving P P S C. P P S C. But I guess that's what P-P-S-C. it is, right? So uh, this is that, but then touch in, uh, but then you get to add in a little bit of my other uh, predilection in fiction, which is uh, fantasy and uh, mythology and that kind mm. of stuff. So you get a combination of both of these things. Uh the basic premise is that uh, Lucifer the devil uh has been uh he is basically bored of hell and he decides fuck it I'm oh going to go to Los Angeles oh and I'm going to live in Los Angeles It's the same thing right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty much what his point is <laughs> that I mean like you know I might as well have some fun while I'm there. Uh it's uh, it's just as much of a hell hole as hell so mm. I might as well be Uh but so the uh, he becomes a consultant to the police department which I wonder how the oh, hell that keeps happening It's very happening. similar to Angel the Buffy spin off It is well Angel like is the premise the, yeah. so premise wise maybe a little bit but Angel is set in a private detective yeah. organization yeah. rather But yeah, somewhat similar okay. in that kind of sense, right? Uh, but yeah, so that's just the basic okay. kind of this, uh, and uh, it's about uh, you know, I mean, like they come across different crimes, and there's mythology involved in it in the mm-hmm. sense that uh, Lucifer is you know uh, the fallen angel, and uh, he has his issues, and uh, you know, so there's a whole bunch of different things like that that come that come into play with it, and uh, it's a well made show, it's a funny show, uh, very very interesting cast. Uh, Uh the second season of it gets really interesting when his mother shows up all of a sudden so his mother is the ex-wife of god and <laughs> oh, <laughs> what <laughs> It all makes sense. It all makes, makes sense. a ton of sense. You know uh, the thing about exes. You know, you never do. Uh, so it, it's a really, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Who's I, playing this character? I think or? it's Tom Hiddleston. Or, oh, oh, he's playing Lucifer. Oh. Yeah, I think I so. I have to watch oh. it. There is no so. way I can watch no, it. Who's playing the mother, the ex-wife? Uh, Trisha, uh, Trisha Helfker, the woman from Battlestar Galactica. Trisha oh, Helfker, okay. Helfker. Uh, the this uh, like, oh my god, it's so funny. Uh, So mm-hmm. she uh, when she first gets introduced into uh, the so Trisha how I can't remember the exact last name mm-hmm. uh but uh, so she's like this ridiculously gorgeous woman like ridiculously ridiculously gorgeous woman mm-hmm. so when she um uh, Uh first introduces herself to Lucifer she's like I am uh, I'm your mother mm-hmm. I am in this stinky meat sack <laughs> but at least it's in a really uh, at least the body's in really good shape <laughs> so oh. Trisha Helfer is the yeah. Trisha, Trisha Helfer. Helfer but this is the same Lucifer from the Neil Gaiman Sandman book It is it's based on that yeah. it's based on that it's Tom based Ellis. on that. Yeah. yeah it's uh, mm-hmm. likely so it's like derived from that likely Okay So the crimes that he's solving uh-huh. uh, so he uses his supernatural powers to solve So them? his he does so his thing is that uh, since he is a fallen angel his super uh, his supernatural powers are limited he oh. doesn't have the full powers that his brothers have Right uh but at the same time he does have some so he uh he is the man in control of desires Oh, okay. So he can basically look at anybody and ask them, "What do you really desire?" Mm-hmm. And he'll get a true answer from them. Like, you know, what do I really want in life? And that leads into like some fun things as well, right? Because I mean, like, uh, he'll be talking to a suspect, and mm-hmm. that guy looks like this 
big badass kind of guy mm. and he's like what do you truly desire I just want to sit on the beach and write my book oh. <laughs> you know so oh. you, you lead to some funny uh, you get some funny what is Vivek Obro in this movie in this uh, series really? what yeah. I'm on the fine TV and this <laughs> Vivek Obro really? that is so he random he hasn't shown up yet <laughs> oh wow you're in for, oh there are a bunch of you know, are Indian you on the right right Lucifer yeah I said Lucifer 2019 <laughs> Yeah. Or maybe this is a different thing also. <laughs> no, it's maybe so maybe. maybe from Los Angeles to Mumbai. <laughs> okay, okay this is a different thing, guys. Okay, all right. No way we go around this. Yeah. Still recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> this is on Netflix? Uh this is on Netflix, yes. Okay, cool. Moving on to me. Guys, I have an app to recommend. Okay. <laughs> I've been watching things but I'm still catching up on old shows so, so I have nothing new right. to recommend, but there's a school app that you should all download immediately. Mhm. It's called the app. It's a photo app. Okay. Basically it's called the UG app, H U J I. It's like Fuji film Fuji. but Fuji. Okay. okay. Ah, yeah, but they have I no association. What it does. I wonder who to to introduce yes, you to. Oh, it. Sorry, I know the app since uh, Can like, I can I guess what it is? It's the beginning does? of time. It yeah. makes the photos look like film film Yeah, grade. it makes it look ah. like it's 1998. Okay. But yeah. it's so fun. So also another cool thing about this app is so it's actually functions like a disposable okay. camera. Oh. So you don't see what photo Oh, you, I mean, you, there's an option, but it's oh. fun to not see what photo you like. The, how the photo will turn out, you have no idea how it will turn out. Ah, okay. And then when you go to the lab, you see like it'll be a random lens flare here, like and one of the parts, and there'll be some grainy ness, mm. and it just makes it look okay. so vintage and like. Like it's 1998. But but you can't see a preview of what what you can't. It's like you have a you know how normal disposable cameras have like right. a lens thingy where oh. you look through. Yeah. Yeah. It's so exactly like that, and it takes oh. time to develop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Interesting. This app. The technology that we made to do things quicker <laughs> yeah. is yeah, now yeah, giving. Yeah, exactly. So nostalgia is yeah. in some nostalgia. ways. Nostalgia. You know, I mean, like it's like the uh, what was that. Uh, Somebody was uh, so uh, I remember seeing this on Product Hunt or somewhere like that. Rotary dial cell phone. Oh, ah, yeah. And, and yeah. Basically, it's like it's meant to be for the house or whatever, yeah. but with a SIM card in it. Mm. But a rotary dial cell phone. Yeah, oh, it's, it's the all same kind of thing, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, completely pointless, completely mm. nonsensical, mm. but a hey, nostalgic feeling. Yeah. That's, That's true. true. Which is why I feel like Polaroid cameras came along. Remember, there's mm. this new thing called Instax, uh-huh. uh, yeah, yeah. which people. It's again, it takes so much time, and the the film is so expensive, but people mm. still buy it because it's like it right. looks it nostalgic. That, yeah, yeah. Mm. Idea. but this app uh, has. 16 million downloads worldwide and it's like oh it's really picking up okay. i think serena gomez downloads and like all of her entire instagram feed is just this app oh, okay. the muji app yeah a lot of celebrities are using yeah. it actually yeah. and yeah. <laughs> yeah also i would actually uh, like to say that uh, if you have a really shitty camera like mine <laughs> this app does wonders yeah. cuz you can't tell you can't the, tell yeah you can't tell your uh, cameras actually yeah. shitty yeah. because of the whole effect <laughs> because of the whole effect yeah <laughs> that is true so would recommend this app for this reason yeah yeah that's true guys it's huchi app it's available on android and uh, ios check it out and uh, let's take a quick break and after the break we'll discuss all the tv shows that we didn't think they were <laughs> finishing <laughs> and uh, yeah it's like all the boys i've loved all before the, to, all the to tv all shows to all the tv shows i've quit before <laughs> <laughs> see you on the other side <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another amazing week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Paytm Money. While we're still going through lockdown, let me recommend a few quick shows for you to listen to. Check out Uncle Please Sit with Joel and Tashar. Really enjoy that show. They unpack some of the greater issues that we're facing, and I think you'll enjoy that. Also, do check out The Traveling Professor. That's a fun show that I think you're really going to enjoy as well. Pulia Bazi is a great show. It's a Hindi show about policy and things like that. They had a great episode last week. A close friend of mine from college, Joy Paul, was the guest. They talk about different social networks being used for different things. Very cool show. And uh, lastly, let me tell you about Simplified. Simplified. I did a live episode last week and uh we're making the first part of that available on their feed right now so do definitely check that out i'm sure you'll enjoy it and with that let's continue with your show hey guys welcome back to the second round of ivm likes and on this round we're discussing to all the tv shows i've quit before <laughs> basically all the tv shows we didn't have the time to finish because we just like hey they were just not worth it mm-hmm. who wants to go first Okay, can I it, go. Can it? <laughs> okay, cool. Go okay. ahead. 
Cool. Just a quick example. I was watching the show called How to Get Away from Murder. With murder. With, yeah. with murder. How uh, to get away with murder. Uh, and it started off great. Season right. one is great. The plot is great. Viola Davis does a great job. Some very powerful performances. But oh my god, in the second season, I feel like everybody is just blaming each other for everything. Like, oh, it's your fault. Maybe it's their fault. It's super twelve-year-old behavior. Nobody got it, away. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, how do you keep getting involved in this? You are all adults. Isn't this the one by Shonda Rhimes? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so I had a similar experience. Are you going to talk about Scandal? Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. Okay. Yeah. I had a similar experience hmm. with the other show that she did, Scandal. Scandal. Yeah. I felt the same about yeah. Scandal. So I think the first season was only seven, eight episodes yeah. or something mm. yeah, like that, yeah. and then so maybe about another eight, ten episodes into the second season, mm. exactly. I'm just like, exactly. this is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> then it becomes like a whole blame game. Then like it's just, super. Everybody's walking into the White House without any <laughs> yeah, repercussions, yeah, yeah. and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's not how it should be. Yeah, because they know the the Viola Davis, like the Annelies, will save everybody because she's like the head of this whole thing. I'm like, no, kids, do your own thing. Don't murder people. That'd be great. <laughs> So I quickly had to like stop that show. I can uh, I can understand that. I, yeah. I actually I didn't like that show. That mm-hmm. I don't understand Shonda Rhimes. Yeah, I, or rather, mm-hmm. I don't understand the Shonda Rhimes like fetishization that happens to a great degree. Yeah. I feel like uh, all three of our shows. I've attempted all three, mm-hmm. and I'm not that tough mm-hmm. of person to please when it comes to television shows, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I just haven't been able <laughs> they, to. Get none of them all. were pretty people solving crimes. Well, like, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is, right? Kind of is, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I scandal was right up my alley. <laughs> Uh, but no, didn't work. What about you, Chano? I think yeah. For me, Grey's Anatomy was that show. Yeah. I got into it. It it started. These shows start off well, yeah. and somewhere in the middle, they just lose their plot, and it's like the same things are happening. Like in, mm. I remember in Grey's Anatomy, it's just like. I don't know. Every everyone in the everyone who enters that hospital just dies. <laughs> <laughs> and yet it's in its 14th season. Oh yeah. my God! People just keep coming. Yeah. yeah. Why do they still go to the hospital? <laughs> exactly. It's like either the doctors are like the, the doctors are the ones who are dying. Okay, the doctors get cancer. <laughs> either they have an accident or like a drug, drug or I don't know what. It just it's bizarre, man. The show is it just I I, I and what season it. were you like I can't do this anymore? Eight surprisingly. Oh. <laughs> 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 Middle of eight season. I <laughs> like too many people have died now. Yeah. I can't keep trying. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of sad also because characters that you kind of In start this, liking yeah. and, and they just kill them. Whose death most affected you? <laughs> like this wow. person wow. have died. Spoilers! Spoilers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also a spoiler. I mean, well, it's I not mean, really if you're talking spoiler. about like eight season. Then I mean, like that's like six years ago. I think yeah. just spoiler. Yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> also, like. Uh, Dying. I wouldn't say the spoiler because pretty much everyone dies in the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was this guy called Amal. Uh, uh, um, What's that guy's name? I Wait, forgot. I mean, Cass. Who played him? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> What did he look like? <laughs> uh, he with his shot, he had. Uh, What's he, his uh, character name? O'Malley, Doctor O'Malley. O'Malley dies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, on I left it on season three. Get a taste of your own medicine, Abbas. This is what spoilers this is the best. I left when O'Malley's dad died. <laughs> yeah. He also dies. Yeah, I was just. Oh, you, you know who else dies? Who? Uh, McDreamy. Apparently. Oh, he dies. I haven't yeah. reached that part yet, but I heard this from someone. Like actually, a person called McDreamy. McDreamy. That's what they call him. I've heard of it. There's a yeah. McDreamy uh, and a McDreamy. Oh, McDreamy is too pretty yeah. to die. But what season was he? Did he die? I don't know. I haven't reached that season yet. It was a later season. We're probably. Eleven or twelve. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. We should do yeah. a special yeah. montage of you just us spoiling things for two minutes straight. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh we've God. just spoiled so many things. Oh my God. Alika, <laughs> what if? Yeah. Okay. So. I I used to really be into this show called Once Upon a Time, which was mm. basically yeah. uh, oh, wow, storybook yeah. characters mm. from fairy tales who had been transported to the real world in mm. a town called Storybrook yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, and lost their memories. So the first season was great. It was them trying to figure out who they were and then figure out how to go home. It was cool for like the first couple of seasons because that was the main plot, and then there they were all the interpersonal relationships yeah. between each antagonist and protagonist and stuff like that. That was great. Mm. And then you started. Noticing about season three and four, that whatever Disney movie released that year, <laughs> they started bringing in those characters. So, like, so now Anna and Elsa from Frozen are here. Now the Wicked Witch of the West has that come. That makes sense because it was on ABC, which is owned yeah. by Disney. Yeah, yeah and it's also it was, a very Disney-heavy show, right? Yeah. It was like Snow White mm-hmm. and it was, uh, Red Robin Hood yeah, and all I that kind of kind stuff. Yeah, I kind of understood, but then it was just like you know the plots are becoming more and more. Mm. 
it was kind of growing like a weird mushroom <laughs> <laughs> was this animated or were the no, characters no. played by actual people they were actual people oh. it was like a drama show okay. it was a family drama show it was fun yeah. it was great for two seasons because then you had to like figure out who was who and then oh my gosh this is you know captain hook come to kill so and so whatever oh. but you know then it became like and now we have the next disney character <laughs> <laughs> I gave up about three seasons. Season, three yeah. seasons. Yeah, good. I think these are the kind of shows that should just end in like two or three seasons. Yeah. They should yeah. not stretch it. There should yes. be yeah. some some shows need to be defined. Lost. Yeah. 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 Lost. Oh, Big Lost Bang Theory. Big Bang oh, Theory. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. That. that wow. Wow. Big Bang Theory needed to have died. After and how Big I Bang Theory? I think uh, you know the thing about Big Bang Theory is that it never was all that special. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was just funny. It was a funny sitcom yeah. with like uh, interesting characters. Hmm. Uh, and you know one of the things. Uh, so I mean, like I think Big Bang Theory suffers a lot from its flanderization. Right, that mm-hmm. Sheldon character has become yeah. something completely Very, unrecognizable as a human true. being at this point. Mm-hmm. In time. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, that I think is uh, part of why it now feels a little tiresome. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I mean, like it never was like you know, it, it, like see, once upon a time there were only so many directions the story could go yeah. before it got dumb. Yeah. Mm. Right? Whereas yeah. Big Bang Theory is basically five people hanging out yeah. making, you know, d- doing sitcom-y stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's true. So I don't know if that is, uh, I, I always thought Big Bang Theory is something that kind of works or doesn't work for people. Yeah, mm. I mean, uh, because I, I think I got it off because I I, I think somebody shared a script and how huh. a script is written on Big Bang Theory and there's just like uh, Sheldon, insert science stuff, Sheldon, insert more science stuff <laughs> and they just get wow. a scientist to make up shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah they just that so science stuff. That doesn't surprise me. I, I mean, no, again, I stereotypical dropped. Indian stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I dropped out of uh, Big Bang Theory very early on, mm-hmm. but I mean, like, I thought it was just because it didn't work for me. I didn't really think of yeah. it as uh, yeah, it was special sure. in any way. Yeah. Mm. I have to say that also uh, in the same vein of Once Upon a Time I think it's the same producers slash directors who worked on Once Upon a Time who worked on Lost oh. Lost I would I would disagree with that yeah Lost died. was amazing from start to finish yeah yeah uh, Listen, for me it was I, so here's the thing I did watch it from start to finish because I needed to know <laughs> what, happens. what happened yes but if you uh, have a slightly higher standards than I do <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should like stop watching after season 3 <laughs> It makes no wow. sense. It what makes no sense. Where would you sense. stop? Lost is my one of my all time favorite oh, okay. shows, so I wouldn't stop. And I, I the hook that Once Upon a Time gave gave was from the creators of Lost, right. which is why I started watching right. it, and it was quite disappointing. Yeah, but yeah, Lost. I I mean I totally get if people it say it isn't its worth way. it. <laughs> <laughs> it lost its way. I don't know. It walked me, into the jungle and just decided to so give up. So do you think that's the case in the fifth season as well? In the fifth season? The last season of Lost? Yeah, it was pretty bad. The really? last season was the sixth season like, and I think that's the sense. weakest. Okay. Because, uh, have you seen the sixth season? I know, so my, my Lost story is very weird. Okay. Uh, <laughs> which I don't... Uh, okay, so basically what happened is that there was a Netflix DVD style service in India okay. that was sending people DVDs. Uh-huh. And that's when I first started watching okay. Lost because uh-huh. that was DVD time, yeah. right? Uh, they sent me the first season and then you had to set up a queue for stuff. Oh, okay. So they sent me the first DVD and then they sent me the second DVD and then I sent those back and then I got the fourth and fifth back instead of the third. Oh. So I never got the third DVD oh. and so then I just never kind of started Continue. watching it again because mm-hmm. that was a time when we didn't have, you know, the shady places where we have now to kind of get un- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. non-legitimate yeah. content. Uh, they weren't as easy to find back then. So uh, I kind of dropped it at that point. I think uh, the sixth season is the weakest but by that time I was too into to it to let it go and I was too in love with the characters but yeah like Lost was like a really good roller coaster. it kind of kept you in suspense and then it didn't there was even, like, no there was no drop yeah, yeah I, I agree like, but uh, what, I don't what? know I still like that show yeah <laughs> it started getting really funky around the fourth season because I was like what is happening I have lost track I don't know who is who anymore because there's some mistaken identity Maybe shit the happening. name after all was foreshadowing to the plot <laughs> yes. like Lost you know the plot also <laughs> yeah have you guys seen 13, season, 13 Reasons Why? No. no oh my god. You, none of you have seen it. No. I started watching it and I couldn't sit through. Like after the first three episodes, oh. I was like, I'm done. It's a lot of drama. First of all, because there are 13 tapes. Right. Every episode is one tape. And that also seems like a drag because it's an hour long episode okay. of just kid stuff. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of bullying for sure. But again, I, I feel like the whole plot of that show is ki, uh, suicide is the best f*** you. Like what? everybody, oh, yeah, okay. it is. What? Yeah, it heard, is. That's I've because the girl. I mean, did this girl come and see you? And she's like, now this is my revenge. Like this, now oh. it's time for revenge. Okay. She makes the whole tapes. 
So the glamour is a suicide in a the whole, uh, whole plot. That's not cool. Yeah, yeah. I mm-hmm. think I read something about people who watch this had a there was like a slightly higher percentage of people committing suicide so after they watched this. So that's a problem. Is, that's that's a big problem with suicide. Yeah. Sorry, I, I know this is not the show for it, but it's something I kind of yeah. am really annoyed with. Hmm. Um, social acceptability of suicide leads to higher rates of suicide. Hmm. which is one of the things that i kind of get really irritated with in our indian culture just generally as well hmm. where like you know we have this attitude that uh, if our problems are too much suicide is an honorable way out hmm. and i just think that that is an unacceptable way to kind of look at things yeah, yeah. that's true sorry a little bit of a tangent <laughs> no but no. that's true yeah. i don't think it's a good show that it yeah, yeah. it's uh, i'd like show. to add so like alika completed a show and she's like the last two seasons are really bad yeah. uh, mm-hmm. dexter Oh, falls yeah. in that category. Oh, I really? just started watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Season, season four, four. Yeah. season four yeah. is amazing. Four. Up to four, it's absolutely awesome. Oh, oh awesome. Really? Awesome. Is it all awesome. episode? Awesome. After four, up to four, up to four. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome. I think it's on awesome. episode two. Oh, okay, so watch it till episode four. Yeah. Watch season four. See, up to season four, up until the point where you get to the John Lithgow or yeah, Jimmy John Smith, Lithgow. John Lithgow, yeah. right? The John Lithgow season. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so after four, I stop. Yeah. After four, I'd stop if I were you. Okay. Four ends on a cliffhanger, so you would be tempted to go to. So Dexter and Scrubs oh. was uh, actually uh, it was eight. It was supposed to be eight seasons. Right. They did the eight season. The last episode of the eight season is a goodbye, and everything ends very nicely. Mm. And then at the last moment, I think ABC renewed it. Mm. So they made a makeshift season nine with the leftover cast mm. and the se- episodes are out of order mm. they get a whole new cast of interns and it's really bad it's oh like shitting God. on eight seasons of legacy on season nine Yikes. so just eight season stop for scrubs I mean, no it's oh, quite right? a lot I it is it? yes <laughs> But it's really I've seen good. bits and pieces. It's the sort of thing I'd put on the TV, and if it was coming, I'd watch it. I mm. never knew which season Boy, it was on. I just watch it. What is a show you guys feel like uh, you would want to go back to? Like you just stopped midway, and now you feel like because <coughs> like I one. didn't watch Breaking Bad season six. Like I've what? I've seen season five, and I know that like I know how it ended. Oh, okay. See, I'm still like a, I haven't finished it the whole thing. So I feel like maybe once in, mm. once. In my, I am life. doing I that do this it. year. I went back to Mad Men. I dropped out of Mad Men yeah. twice, but this time hmm. round, I'm actually. Really How are you into it, it in this time yeah. age? So many fun know. shows. I don't know because it's it just makes more it's just more appealing to me this time around. I don't know why. This is good nostalgia. I sta- again I started watching Mad Men. I, I these shows I'm just like watching one also episode an hour long show. But are you, do you find Mad Men interesting? Do any of you find no. it interesting? No, I do. I f- start finding it interesting now. I find now. it damn boring. I also find it damn boring. Yeah, it's, it's quite slow and also the, it is, the yeah. kind of they made a big deal out of the show. It yeah. It's a slow burn. Great. It's a slow burn. It takes you like four or five episodes to really get a sense of what they're trying to say. So here's what I recommend. Okay, and again. The, you may not do this but if you read uh, there's this uh, tv critic uh, i forget his name uh, seppenwall not seppenwall he's written a lot about he's done a lot of, about it uh, mm-hmm. another one of one of the critics i don't remember the name um i'll probably link it in the description so he mm-hmm. did a review of ev- after every episode oh. and when i read the review after every episode it just kind of made me appreciate the episode a little more oh. and made me want to watch mm-hmm. the next one more because these are the recap mm. reviews. Mm. He's seen the whole show once. He's watching it again, oh, okay. and he did it for AV Club, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when he Todd take, uh, Vander, Todd Vanderwaif, yes. Yeah. So when he does the whole, uh, without giving spoilers for what's coming, when he kind of takes it in the whole context, mm. it kind of m- makes you appreciate it. What more season are you on? I'm on this. I'm about to end the second season. Oh. So I watch one episode day. every two days or so. Yeah. So, Tom okay. Vanderwaif has a good podcast. Uh, I think you're interesting. Yeah, I, I listen to yeah, that as well. Good, really a good, good podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I had two shows, uh, mm-hmm. which I kind of, both of which I just abandoned. Like, completely. Mm-hmm. I never, once I got to a point where I'm like, okay, you bore me five episodes in a row, I'm done. Uh, first was Glee. Oh. oh. Wow. <laughs> I never got into it. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I never got into it. So, I, I enjoyed the first season like hell. I really enjoyed yeah? the first season. I'm like, okay, I can enjoy <laughs> musicals. You know, I mean, like, that really this is, is what me. went through my head. How, I, I have never enjoyed a musical thing in my life, right? Hmm. I, why are you looking at me like that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Huh? I'll, I'll speak with you later. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but at one point, uh, you know, at some point, it just got like, Every episode was so stupid yeah. and so dumb <laughs> that I mean I think like somewhere in the early parts of season three I just completely dropped out of it. 
Uh, the other one, which I loved for four seasons, mm-hmm. and the fifth season was just utter crap, was Alias. Oh, was that about uh, okay. Jennifer Garner? The J.J. Abrams show. J.J. Abrams yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this was uh, kind of a spy-like show, uh, some supernaturalist elements, not exactly, but sort mm. of. Uh, it's like they're, they're a private group mm. of spies who go around doing missions all over the world. And they have unlimited budgets to do whatever <laughs> they want to. And they can, basically, they are a, uh, they, they have the power to do everything. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, so this was Brad Cooper's first thing. Oh. Uh, Jennifer Garner was in it. Uh Michael Vartan. Yeah, a uh, lot of it people. A lot, lot of really good, a uh, lot of really yeah. good actors. The, mm. uh, from Legends of Tomorrow, the guy who plays the half fire guy, the older guy. I remember. He plays uh, Jennifer Garner's father. Mm. Ron Rifkin plays uh, Arvin Sloan, who is probably the best, single best television villain ever, in my opinion. Oh. Uh, so really, really great show, spy show. And then it just goes completely off the rails oh, in the no. first season. Fifth season. Though. Fifth season. First four seasons are incredible. Fifth season's if just If you cool. had to go back to any of these shows, Glee or Elias, which one would you be like, okay, fine, I'll do it. I'll just uh, watch it. Say it. It's Glee, right? It's Glee. It probably is Glee because <laughs> the thing with Glee is at least some of the songs will be interesting. Alias <laughs> <laughs> uh, only approves me. Yeah. The thing with Alias is that uh, it just, the show turned into something which is crap. Oh. Right? Whereas, uh, and it, it when you're making this kind of show, you're like kind of uh, treading a delicate line as it mm. is in the sense that uh, we're making a spy show, but we're making a spy show with like these kind of superpowered mm. people yeah. who can do like, you know, they'll climb up the side of it's a so wall. It's so convenient. They have all the power. This, is, this yeah. is actually a running theme in J.J. Abrams' things where everything starts off really well and then yeah. towards the end, he just keeps tacking on yeah. like, various things. Yeah. Yeah. It turns into mythology. It it into, oh. yeah. So the thing with the, uh, yeah, what happens towards the end of Alias is that it gets all kind of like, uh, so there is this mythical philosopher called Rambaldi or Rambaldi or something mm-hmm. like that who basically figures out time travel and this and that and all that kind of stuff and uh, it just basically turns into a hunt for Rambaldi instead of being a show where like you know the mm-hmm. These guys are trying to achieve something or trying to do something instead of that. Uh, what, what's, uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, I, what made the first parts, I think, really work is that you never really knew who was good, who was bad. Mm. Mm. Uh, and I think that was part of the big fun in the first mm. uh, seasons, right? Because the guys who are working over there all think they're working for the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. They're doing good stuff. And then they find out later that, no, we're not exactly doing <laughs> that. We are actually being used for this kind of uh, private hunt around different oh. things. And so mm. it, it's kind of interesting that stuff was all really interesting but then it just got it's Illuminati <laughs> <laughs> you know another show that uh, totally loses its plot after the first season was Prison Break oh, oh like, god <laughs> <laughs> do you watch Prison Break I haven't gotten into it it broke out of the prison in the first season and, and that, that should be the end that should be the end <laughs> Oh, yeah. speaking of prison, I remember watching Orange is the New Black. And I oh. left that midway. I also left it after for season one. Yeah. So I, yeah. I left I after saw season three. Two seasons, but I will go back to it at some point. Like I yeah, have Orange it. is the New Black doesn't feel like something that I've left forever. Yeah. Oh. You know, it feels like something I just get to at some point. Also, it's again. convenient because it's on Netflix. So I feel like I see yeah. it on my, like, yeah. my history. I'm like, fine, I'll watch you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so some of there is that yeah. also, right? I mean, like, it's like, yeah. you yeah, need some time. You need some effort. There was another show, but it got cancelled anyway, kind of similar to Prison Break. It was called Alcatraz. Oh, wow. Again, okay. same team that made Lost. Uh, okay. Again, wow. prison on an island. I feel okay. like this is a theme now. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the same cast members, but I, it, it ran for one season and then cancelled, but I dropped out of, by the eighth episode. I was like, no, oh, this wow. is it. Yeah. Yeah. Trump, do you have a show you wish you could go back? Yeah, House of Cards. Oh, wow. That's oh, an okay. intense show. This, like, it needs is. a lot of mind space. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, I watched up in the point where I think he got elected as president and then... That's first episode. Yeah, that's the first, <laughs> that's first, first episode. season. No, no, first no. episode. <laughs> president, okay. Yeah, president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I think, the third Yeah, third season. No, I think it's after the third. He is okay. not... Pre- he's, he becomes vice president at the end of three. Oh, okay. then I sortled that point. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's quite an investment. Wow, you should man. go all the way. Uh, yeah, you should yeah, probably I should go back and <laughs> you've you come all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've come yeah. this entire, yeah, you watched three seasons. That's great. Yeah. I'm proud of you. So notice all of these shows are dramatic shows. Yeah. Mm. Any comedies that you've left halfway? Mm. 
community because I feel like if yeah, it's not right. Netflix, I dropped community. I feel like it's because I it, there's less ease of watching it. It's on that Hotstar, Amazon, on Netflix. Right. So I'm like I'm done like trying to watch it. Trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. No, but so, I also they did it not also get a little too much. Yeah, I think one of the characters also left. I feel oh, I I can't remember his name. The old character. Chevy Chase. Yeah, he yes. left. So that's when I dropped out. I was like, he hmm. left because of health reasons. I think. No, no, he, he got he had a he was an problem. Yeah. <laughs> there was some no, problems on set. He left because hmm. he was a dick to everybody. Really? Yeah, he, had he some problems was making set. consistent. Uh, I I'm not a hundred percent sure, so I shouldn't say this, but I think he was making consistently racist remarks on set. Yeah, yeah. that's true. This yeah. something on on set mm-hmm. happened which. Why he yeah. left, and suddenly I was like, "Oh, this doesn't feel the same again." So I left. <laughs> I was like, "Cool." Um, I kind of stopped watching How I Met Your Mother after like the first season. Oh, you like, did, that's you did well. You did. Yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, one time. Well, about actually, if you dropped out the first season, then you missed the peak of the show, which was coming in the second season. It's not that far away. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but the peak of the show was that slap pet episode. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But I'll go and watch up till season two again. I guess. <laughs> but considering the season finale is so absurd and so like, like no, like such it a fail. The entire fail. final season is bad. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. should we so, even invest? So here's the thing, right? We were talking. What were we talking about? We were just talking about this, right? Shows which stretch too long. Mm. That's the problem with How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Mm. Right, because that was supposed to. Be, so I was reading an interview by the guys who made it, mm. and it was supposed to be a five season, uh, five season show. Mm. Now, in a mm. five season show, pulling off an ending the kind they wanted mm. to, they could have probably gotten away with it. Mm. But yeah, yeah because now uh, what happens is a nine season show that Ted and Robin relationship yeah. is established so deeply exactly. as a friendship yeah. at that point yeah. in time. Plus, there is the Barney romance which came in like six, seven, yeah. Yeah. which mm. again was kind of just. Uh, this, Deflecting, right? yeah. yeah, exactly. So I mean, like, uh, if it was a five-season show, then they probably could have gotten away with the story that, that they imagined, yeah. right? But when it's a nine-season show, you know these characters so yeah, well. Yeah, because they're always like rebooting it for the next season. They forget that people are too invested yeah. in this now. You can't suddenly be like, oh, actually, the mother is. Yeah, and they kept going out of the way to yeah. specify. No, she's not the mother. Yeah. She's not the mother. Yeah. And then yeah. they did well. I guess she was. <laughs> you know, but not we meant she is. <laughs> Speaking of shows which went on way too long, <laughs> Supernatural. What the heck? Is it it's still on? Thirteen like or fourteen? It's on fourteen right oh now. Oh my god! So I stopped. It actually, should have stopped at five. See, the thing is, the reason why I didn't mention that, I thought about that. Should I okay. have talked about Supernatural in this thing? Because the, up till five, the ending of five was phenomenal, mm. right? That's when the whole uh, angels versus demon war happened yeah, and all yeah. of that, right? Uh, the reason why I was thinking about that is because I I lasted till ten over there. <laughs> oh, okay. I've right? not lasted that. Long. So if I last till ten on a show, then at that point have I really abandoned it? <laughs> I don't You're ride know. and die now. Huh? You're ride and die. Well, now no, I mean, like show. I've left the last three, four seasons. Okay. I'm not, I don't even think I'm going to go back to them, right? But I mean, like at the same time, I got. 10 seasons into it that means I've seen like over 200 episodes of Supernatural that's true I don't know if I could consider it something that I have abandoned right I think it's gone on far too long guys it has those actors have been really? under contract still for on. years yeah. people yeah, have yeah, been still gone on. and there gone to high school coming out. there are new episodes <laughs> coming out still what about Modern Family? What season is Modern Family Modern on? Modern Family is it's on like season 8 nine. or 9 it's yeah. on 9 no, but I this is the final 9 or season. 10 8 oh. It released like two year, one or two years back. So then this is, this is the final season though. But like The Office was also season the eight office seasons. How was did nine, uh, seven seasons. Eight. Seven. Eight. 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 Office eight. Was eight. eight. Okay. So I haven't seen it, but I know it's eight because I just was about to start watching it. I wanted to see how many seasons there were. So yeah. again, I think the off the US Office ran a little way too long. I don't especially know. after Michael Scott left. No I man, know. I feel like those were also like good seasons. No. The yeah. ones after Michael left. But after Michael left, there were only one or two. Two, one, two seasons. Two. But they were still not. They were not like bad. They were actually funny, like in different aspects. Who yeah. replaced him? No one. No, but so basically, and he comes in, he becomes the manager. Okay. And then, uh, like the storyline. So line. they did this thing where. F- after he left for the next couple of episodes, hmm. every episode they got a celebrity to fill in ah, as a replacement. Okay. Like Will Ferrell would show yeah. up, Ricky Gervais would show up. Ah, okay. It was funny though. I it like was fun. Those were funny, but yeah. then after that, when he left, it just it just became like I think it's like Simpsons without Homer. I'm like, oh. where's the guy? Where's Did the funny any guy? of you watch Nine Hundred Two One Hundred? Uh, the original? Yeah, the like original one. With Jason Priestley and Luke Perry? No, 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 no,
whether you were not born when that show was out. No, this is Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah, this was Beverly Hills 90210. But it was originally released in like the late 80s. Yeah. So not this one. Because I remember seeing that when I was in school. Oh, this was the first show like I watched out of my... Because, yeah, I think before this I just watched Disney and suddenly 90210 came along. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, and I got super tired of it because these guys just seemed super like rich and yes. they just party every day after college. Yes. So how so do, how do you it. keep a high school show fresh because this yeah. still in high school yeah you don't you <laughs> just, it's a movie yeah just you know I mean, like, and, and if you want to do a high school show then you gotta have slightly rotating class, mm-hmm. class right. and so, you have to be willing to like shut it down soon man. which yeah. is why I loved Buffy because they did everything from burning the school down to oh. going to another city to getting new people in <laughs> no, they moved to college too right they moved to college yeah, too so, well, I mean, yeah. oh, okay. so that I think is the solution right the original yeah. 90210 uh, it started off in uh, high school and then they moved it to college ah, okay. all of them went to the same college College, nice. in the same town <laughs> living with their parents wow. <laughs> but at least they moved to college <laughs> <laughs> at least they moved to college <laughs> I remember finishing 90210. It ended. The ending of the new one was pretty. You blah. seen the whole thing? I I think I did. Man. I I got through it somehow, <laughs> and then I got into Gossip Girl. Oh, mm. yeah. I couldn't. I, yeah, I couldn't finish that show. It was Gossip Girl is just again. It's it's like a more. Uh, kind of spicier version of what happens in 90210 but huh. it's it's like more drama more more people just cheating on each other sleeping with each other it's like Man. that's literally the plot there's I nothing to it <laughs> I can never get into these shows like there's another show called Jane the Virgin and people are like it's a good show but mm, I can yeah, that's what just, I've been told yeah but just I've the, heard from a number of people it's a really yeah. good show just the whole idea of it because I feel like it's all about like boys and like sleeping around I'm like I'm not no, it's, it's, not it's, that, no, like, it's about uh, maybe it's, I have assumptions yeah no I maybe think it's, it's a a, show. the show from what I understand it's about uh, she gets pregnant in some sort of an accident mm-hmm. yeah in the sense that uh, she was getting some sort of medical procedure done and yeah. in the course of that she got pregnant somehow oh. she uh, gets exchanged with someone who wants artificial insemination <laughs> so yeah. someone puts Ooh. a baby in medically puts Spoiler a baby inside no it's in the trailer hence Jane the virgin she's a virgin but she's gonna have a baby Oh. Yeah. And it's a family kind of. Uh, it's a family drama. It's a family drama. Wow. It borrows from the te- the telenovelas. It, it, uh, it is Spanish, a remake yeah. from there, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So I mean, I've heard it's actually really supposed to be really nice. Has anyone seen the um, second season of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? I have not yet. First one okay. I'm still on the first one. Yeah. I haven't okay. finished that. Yeah. Cool. Let's okay. watch that next and figure out what I'm feeling. You want to tell tell you a fun fact? So, Shruti Rajgopalan, who's on the 100th episode of Seen and the Unseen, she lives in a building which is in Marvelous Miss Maisel. Like, they, they took an establishing shot of her building. Oh, that's Because nice. it's a really old building from oh, the wow. 60s. Nice. And, uh, yeah. That's what? so cool. Yeah. See, she says this because she had a fracture and uh, she had to push the door to open every time. Uh, so, she went up to the authorities and like, why don't you change the door considering so many old people. So, they're like, no, we can't touch this because apparently in, in America, if your structure is old, made before a certain date, you can't change anything. Well, that's oh. why we have the same heritage laws here, no? Really? Yeah, of okay. course we have heritage. I mean, like, why do you think half a fort is still standing the way that's it is true. with these old buildings? You mm. think that people don't want to rebuild the buildings? <laughs> I was under the impression it's uh, there out of their hearts to keep the, <laughs> yeah. keep the old vintage <laughs> so but yeah just a connection this, also this week uh, Seen Unseen episode 100 yeah check it out and, <laughs> and a vague, vague connection to Marvelous Miss <laughs> Thanks but that's that. in its second season right yeah it's okay. second season do you guys think the like now with the new Netflix and Prime originals they would be clever to cap off shows earlier than their uh, predecessors. So we're already seeing them definitely finishing shows off, yeah. right? Shows which have not gotten proper endings yeah. uh, are starting to get their like last seasons on Netflix, right. Amazon, that kind of stuff. So you're definitely seeing that. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things that uh, you find is that, uh, so what was the, there were, uh, Silicon Valley, mm-hmm. right? So the second season of Silicon Valley, uh, normally nobody does this, right? But the producer, Mike Judge, went yeah. to HBO and yeah. said that, hey, I think I have 
have too many episodes for the story I want to tell. Oh. So can we cut this season down to nine episodes from ten? Hmm. Oh, okay. Right. So that uh, I think that you're going to start seeing a certain amount of acceptance over there for right. that kind of thing because the number of episodes doesn't matter so much hmm. in a on a OTT world as compared to a broadcasting Network. world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In a broadcasting world, you have to fill a schedule. You yeah. have to fill a certain amount of time. Right. In an OTT world, that's not the situation yeah. at all. You want to kind of get people to. Talk about your show as much as possible, mm-hmm. so that a bus who doesn't have Netflix, when me and Surbhi are talking about yeah. Netflix, is like, I man, want to get I one. gotta get Netflix. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. You know, so the incentives are slightly mm-hmm. different. Yeah. They actually did an episode of The Simpsons about this, where Homer becomes a TV critic, okay. and he's just too overwhelmed to watch everything. Uh-huh. So he gets called in by this shady organization called Google Disney, who owns everything. Okay. So they get him in, and they're like, "Why aren't you reviewing our shows?" And Homer is like, "That's just too much to see." <laughs> And uh, they're like, uh, do you know of the of um, uh, the they name one of the networks? And uh, they're like, we're not making these shows. We just want people to subscribe in the hope that they will one day watch these shows. <laughs> have you ever heard of Private Practice? He's like, yeah. Have you ever heard of House of Lies? He's like, yeah. They, uh, why haven't you reviewed them? He's like, I didn't find time. They're not shows. They we just make promos <laughs> and we just put them out. Oh we're God. not making them. Actually, House of Lies is a show, and it's probably not the best show mm-hmm. that is exactly the point like yeah. nobody watches these nobody shows watches they just subscribe in the hope of one day watching one day, these shows yeah. it's, aspirational. it's aspirational it's <laughs> aspirational yes. but the Netflix is cancelling a lot of shows also I remember getting into this show called Everything Sucks it's huh. about this uh, high school not, 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 not even high school it? actually did, did it just, just come out kids in school it just came out right it came out last year I think and I got into it. Season one was great. It and it ends on a cliffhanger. And I'm like, okay, when is season two out? I Google to see, and they cancel <laughs> the show. Nice. So they also cancel all the uh, Marvel, DC's, uh, Marvel, yeah. Marvel stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, Marvel stuff. So I mean, like they're definitely pressing for Daredevil. Uh, yeah. yeah, which is so. But I think Daredevil might get. Cancel no, 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 no. Here's the seasons. thing: this they'll is, this pick is, it up on their own uh, streaming right. network. Oh yeah, the Disney one. They can't because the oh. Disney streaming is going to be a PG-13 only streaming service, and really? the reason they made Netflix shows was they wanted to do R-rated stuff. Mm. But then why did they cancel it? Exactly. Is it so Wait, far? Netflix cancelled huh? it. No, it's not yeah. Disney cancelled it. So far, Netflix was the house of shows which get cancelled. Elsewhere, now oh. they themselves are canning their shows. No, so. but I think that uh, the, at some level you have to make choices, no? Sure. Mm. Yeah. I mean, uh, you have to. That's what. So now Netflix things. is like just another t- television channel. It is a television yeah. channel, right? I, I, and it's going to. The thing that's different is Netflix uh, is a Netflix or an Amazon Prime or a Hotstar or any of these other content players which are providing original content. Their incentives are different in terms of what they are looking for out of a show mm. than what a television station is looking for, which is why you're starting to see more deeper shows. You're starting to see shows which are more complexly scripted mm-hmm. than what you would see on regular mm-hmm. television, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you will not see... Pretty people solving crimes is not happening on Netflix, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That is yeah. unlikely to be a genre that works over there. Mm-hmm. That is something that works in the larger kind of mm-hmm. uh, or in the more broadcasty space, mm-hmm. where you're looking at marketing more important. Mm-hmm. You're looking at marketing in certain ways. You're looking at certain things which are just different in terms of how they work. Right. Mm-hmm. That is true. <laughs> Awkward silence. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, so clearly we've all seen a lot of content in 2018. Yeah. Yes, we have. This has been a great year. Yes. Yep. Is this the last? Yeah, this is kind of the last episode for this, for this year, right? Yeah. Yeah, so guys, we'll see you next year now, <laughs> 2019. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check out our Instagram. We are at IBM Podcast. We post a bunch of cool stuff there. And you can also reach out to us personally, Abbas. Yeah, you can reach out to me on Twitter. My handle is at Abbas Momin. Amit. Uh, I'm Doshi Amit on Twitter and Instagram and whatever else. Alika? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Cape Fox Alex. Chanam? You can find me on Twitter at Chanam Devan. You can find me on Twitter at Small Talk Police. I'm Surbhi and see you next time. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Bye. Christmas. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Happy Holidays. Yes. Yeah. 
Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta. I'm B50 on Twitter. I am the host of Paisa Paisa, the show that talks money. On my show, I speak to experts from every field of money and finance, from stock markets, equities, debt funds, credit cards, life insurance, every possible area of money and finance that you can think of. We even did an episode on cryptocurrency. I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere. Robo advisory, startups, just name it, we've got it. At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday and you can listen to my show on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have. Do you have a night routine? Well, everyone has one. And the to-do list usually looks like this. Brush your teeth, set that alarm, get into your pajamas and switch off those screens. But here's one more to add to that list. Tune into the Positively Unlimited podcast for a dose of positive action and tips on how to build powerful mindsets. Episodes out every Monday on the IBM Podcast app, ivmpodcast.com or wherever you tune into podcasts.